you, I need a sip of coffee first. Okay. <laughs> One of those days here in the mom cave. Ah, iced coffee on the dog days of summer. Hey everyone, I'm Maria Sansone. It is Wednesday, it is four o'clock. Welcome to another live chat edition of mom to mom This is a show where I sit here in my mom cave and take a little break from mom life and laundry and <laughs> work <laughs> to sit down with another mom who is an expert in some category um, to chat and check in and see how everything's going. So I think you're going to love today's guest, especially if you're feeling like you're in a little bit of a summer slump. Okay, because I definitely am in a bit of a summer slump. It is hot as could be. I'm here in the Boston area. I don't know where you all are tuning in from, but I it's been 100 degrees here. And there's only so many times that I can send the kids down the slip and slide or get out the kiddie pool. So I need some help from a professional in many ways. So today we've got that professional. Today I'm talking to Erica Spira, and you may know her on Instagram as Busy Little Izzy. And Izzy is her daughter. She was an educator, and now she is pretty much a full-time blogger sharing all of her tips and tricks and parenting hacks and fun things to do um, on social media and on YouTube. She's, as I said, a mom, of course, and she's also an advocate for ADHD and has a very interesting story of how she just realized that she had ADHD as well. So that may be interesting. Um, so let's bring her in. Erica, how goes it? Hi, hi everybody. <laughs> how good are you? How are you? Good, how are you doing? I'm awesome. So I noticed on your Instagram today that you have a very similar scenario like I do. This is my pseudo mom cave. Tell everyone where you are right now, because it looks like I, you're in a really cute little office. I'm in my office, AKA my closet. Ta-da. <laughs> Guys, momming <laughs> is all smoke and mirrors. Yeah, it is. It really is. <laughs> you fake it till you make it. So I know that you're joining us from Maine. Yes. Right. So tell us where you're from and a little bit about your family. And is it also like a thousand degrees there right now? It is hot here. Um, we're about to, you know, pop into August. That's like the hottest month in Maine. And um, yeah, it's 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 really warm. I'm actually from Belgrade, Maine. Um, so I'm from Maine, but um, we lived in Georgia. I lived in Georgia for a while. We moved because of my parents' work, and then um, had to find my way back because I just I belong here. I love it yeah. here. I love, I love New England. I'm loving this area. I'm loving the seasons. Yeah. I came via LA. I mean, I've lived all over the place, but um, the seasons yeah. are the most important, I think. And experiencing those with Izzy, uh, that's been like the best part because there's just so much to do each season. So tell me a little bit about your background. So you were a teacher and an educator. Yep. And so that's one reason that I think people are drawn to you on social media is you come equipped with all of these great tips and tricks for not only surviving this pandemic and the quarantine, but also just kind of like getting through summer and then what we may be facing in the fall. So tell us how you went from educator to full-time mom and blogger. You froze, sorry. Um, okay, so um, I was, uh, well, I started working with children a lot and I've always loved kids and they've been near and dear to my heart. Um, I actually started working with some children with autism and that's kind of where I changed my degree from marketing, ironically, which is kind of what I do now also, um, to education. And then um, I was teaching, I have a birth through five degree, so early education. And then I also got certified in kindergarten through fifth. Um, but I mostly taught special education. Um, and then I was teaching online virtually, um, which was really fun, but it was a lot of work and a lot more stuff was getting piled on us. Um, uh, Izzy, I worked from home with her. I nursed like in between teaching online classes and everything. Um, and it just got to be too much. And so I started doing some part-time work um, for the company and just kind of helping with related services for children um, and get making sure they were getting the services they need like speech and stuff like that virtually. 
Um, and then um, the company did like a huge cut and I was already kind of blogging on the side, but it wasn't meant to be full time. And they cut people really high up and people that were newer to to the crew. And that was me. So then I just dove full for, like head first into blogging. You know, you hit on something that I think a lot of moms are going to be facing in the future here. And that is creating that, making that side hustle your full-time job, especially if we're going to be faced with the decision whether to go to work or to stay home and be part of this remote learning situation. So what advice do you have for someone who is looking to kind of make their passion their full-time job and be home with the kids? I think it's totally about finding like your niche and really like what you enjoy. If you enjoy it and you're passionate about it, like I love helping and educating parents and people and making things fun and exciting. So this was like a big passion of mine. And um, I think that's why, like, even when I was teaching, I loved giving parents like tips and ideas and things like that. And um, so I think you just really need to follow your passions, things you really, really enjoy. Um, I think that's my number one tip too. like, don't get discouraged. Um, that there's always going to be ups and downs. There's going to be times that you're like, I just, I need to quit. Like, I can't do this. It's not working. And you just need to know everyone goes through that. That is creating and building a business. Um, and three, I would say, reach out to, you know, people on social media, Google things, go on Pinterest. There's a lot of good resources out there um, for kind of like figuring out where, if you're making a product, how to sell it, where to sell it, you know, all those kinds of things. It's a lot. Someone wanted to say hi. This is my daughter, Grace. This is my new friend, Erica. And she has a daughter named Izzy. And, and that's Izzy. Yes, exactly. My so I want her to come back because I know in a bit you're going to show us some um, some of your back to school essentials. And yeah. I wanted Grace to weigh in to make sure that their kid approves. So I'll, I'll bring you back in towards the end, okay? okay. I'll call for you. <laughs> So cute. This is working from home, everybody. <laughs> you never know who might pop in or pop out. So I am looking forward to your, you know, I don't even want to call it back to school because I don't know if we're going back to school. So yeah. back to learning. Yeah. Maybe we'll call it. Um, all right. So your Instagram and your success that you found online has all been about your daughter, Izzy, and the things you do together. So tell us about some of the activities that you've been doing this summer to get through? <laughs> so many things. And I try and tell everybody that I, I like people to know that like it can be simple and it doesn't have to be like, we do have some really fun, crazy, intense activities that I show on the blog, but it doesn't have to be or feel that way. Um, it can just be something you're doing like in your day to day. Like say you're in like the a like blow up kiddie pool which is what we have and you want to keep them more entertained engaged whatever um you could play like i spy or like a color search and you know you can always make things kind of like scaffold things per like how old your child is like maybe you're gonna look for something that starts with a certain letter or letter sound mm. or then you ask them like how's that spelt or you know there's cool things you can do we've done a lot of outdoor scavenger hunts we've done indoor scavenger hunts that you know, I put on the blog and we laminate so that we can use over and over again. Um, and just lots of fun stuff like that. So do you feel like because you were a teacher, you're super equipped to be a mom? Do you see that you're, you're seeing some similarities? Or you know, now that I don't teach, I'm like, well, good thing I had that four year degree because <laughs> because I'm putting it to use being a mom. Uh, yeah, I do. I think it's been super beneficial because I think there's a lot of times as a mom, you're like, am I going to mess my kid up? Am I doing this right? And I was actually even talking to my husband about that last night. I was like, there's so many back and forth. Uh, there's a lot of data that goes back and forth, like, um, and it, it was like sleeping and what's appropriate and laying with your kid or not. And I've laid with Izzy till she falls asleep her entire life. And that's just the only way she can fall asleep. And I think that's fine. But last night I kept going and laying with her, but I didn't want her to come in our bed um, because I, it's, that's like a special treat thing. And um, so I just kept going in there and I was like, man, if like studies said, like, just bring the kid in bed with you and that's the best thing for them. You know, I'm trying to give her some independence and teach her like she can do it. She can stay in her room. She's fine. And you just don't know what you're doing, if it's right or wrong. I so. think a, a mother's intuition trumps any study any day. I agree with that. You got to go with your gut. 
Yep. Always. Speaking of screwing our kids up, um, <laughs> how do you feel about this is a high anxiety situation, especially with school, maybe going back or not going back um, in about a month now. How do we protect our kids from our anxieties and the conversations we're having? That's the, I think the biggest thing with that is being honest with your kids. If you're anxious or nervous, or um, fearful, scared, I think to sit down and say, you know, you know, adults feel emotions too. Everybody feels emotions. You know, this has been a lot. Like when I was upset or stressed, I was like, you know, I'm, mommy's just stressed because there's so many changes, you know? And like, I think it's so important to let your kids know that it's okay to like feel. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times nowadays people want to like hide as a parent and you shouldn't, you should show them and then show them how you work through it and, you know, give them strategies. Yeah. I think it's hard, you know, you always want to be really strong for your kids, but at the same time, emotion and feelings is so important. And yeah. there have been plenty of times during this pandemic and um, with everything else that's been going on in the world yeah. where I've been watching the news in one eye and kind of serving breakfast and, you know, with the other. And there was one day that the news just was too much for me to bear. And I started crying in my kitchen and I had that moment of, knock it off. You don't right. want them to see you crying. And then I thought, you know what? This is a teachable moment. Yeah. And I wanted them to know that the things I was seeing on TV were making me really sad. And then that's okay. Right. Yeah. I agree with that. It's true. You have to let them see that you, it's not being grown up or tough to not have mm -hmm. you know, emotions. Everybody has them. And it's important to talk about them and have them and, you know, Funny, suppress and hold them in is so much more no it's so bad detrimental. Um, and then my daughter said i've only ever seen you cry happy tears which was really sweet i'm like right. oh no there's there's lots of tears i just yeah. usually hide it so um all right let's talk a little bit about um you're an advocate for adhd something that you discovered you had so tell us a little bit about that journey and mm -hmm. and how you realize that that's something that you were struggling with in college, um, I mean, especially like having background in special education and everything, we they went over it. And I remember the professor saying that day, like, oh, you probably think you have this, but you don't. And I'm like, oh, okay, then I don't. But like everything just sounded so like me. And then um, years later, obviously, um, I have my daughter and she just has all these tendencies. And like, I'm just kind of jokingly like, oh, I feel like she maybe she has ADHD, I don't know. And then I started reflecting more on myself. And then I had lunch with a girlfriend one afternoon, we were catching up, we hadn't seen each other in a few years. And she was telling me how she had been diagnosed and like what it looked like and the anxieties and things. And I was like, wow, that's, I can relate to all of that. Um, and so then I went on a journey, found a you know, psychologist and was like, all right, here's the deal. I think maybe I have this, everything I was starting to read, I was like, oh my gosh, nail on the head. Yes, as a child, you know, all these things, check, check. And I think that's one of the things to look for is like a stress society and all the stress can make people feel like they have ADHD, like as an adult, like, oh my God, I feel so, you know, like I can't focus. But if you have a lot of signs and things as a child and you remember being like wow i remember really struggling with that or focusing on that um i think that's the biggest thing to look for so i'm new to this subject really i mean we've you know anxiety is something that i've dealt with i dealt with postpartum depression um up until then i really was healthy as could be um and so when it hit me it hit me like a ton of bricks yep. um this particular so with ADHD what are some of the symptoms you said you sort of had them all but what are they so it's so different for everybody which is why it's such a tough diagnosis and why I think so many people get overlooked or misdiagnosed um because a lot of times anxiety and depression can um actually make if you're struggling with both of them it can also cause you to be more forgetful and things like that and then it can cause almost adhd type symptoms so um i think struggling to focus and not just like everybody has moments like that like i mean like multiple times a day i will walk in a room and be like why am i here 
and I don't know. Um, are going to leave like your driveway or ro- turn a road every time and being like, which direction do I turn to go to the grocery store? Just that's like a very normal thing for me. And even as a kid, it was very normal for me to almost like go into like another daydream. And then the teacher's like, all right, pop quiz on everything we just learned. And you're like, oh my God, I wasn't here though. But I wasn't here. My body was, but I wasn't. Um, even things like another one that's kind of funky is sounds really can like distract me. So if my daughter's just like humming or making a noise or the fridge is doing something, I'm just like, ah, I need to go somewhere else. Cause like Mm -hmm. that makes me, I just can't even think. Like overstimulated. Yeah. It's really hard. So a lot of people in the chat here are relating. Lisa was saying happens to me at least four times a day. Julie was saying, OMG, story of my life. Hi to everyone in the chat, by the way. We see you. Um, So if you have any questions for Erica, please pop in. I don't want to dominate the conversation. This is for you guys, too. Um, So if you are just joining us, Erica's with us. She is uh, a former teacher, and she's now a full-time blogger and a mom, and she's got great tips for activities for the kids. In a few minutes, we're going to get to her back-to-school essentials. Um, But right now we're just kind of digging into all things momming. Barry says, I mean, I've been known to put random things in the refrigerator and not realize it. Oh, that's called mom brain, Barry. And you can't blame it on that. Because I leave my phone in random places all the time. Like sometimes I'm like, oh God, did I put it in the oven? And they're like in the washing machine. So I'm like pinging. Because even my phone's always on silence. So, but you can ping it. It's life Uh changing. That's what I have. And that is the, the, the number one reason I use this. Yeah. <laughs> to find my phone, which is oftentimes in my hand. Yeah. I, I've been on my phone and I'm like, hold on a second. I just need to focus. I'm looking for my phone. I just, like, you know, I think part of it too, and obviously you're diagnosed with ADHD, but for a lot of us, we just got too much going on. There's too much. I, I mean, much. I think when I was talking about the psychologists and psychiatrists, they were like, there's just nowadays, there's just too much put on society. And I think that's why a lot of people are like, do I have that? Do I have that? But there's just, we have, we're, so much is expected. Yeah. So much. And like, I think for moms, we all want to be great at all of our jobs. But for being a mom, you want to be A plus plus. Right. And it's probably not realistic. No. Um, it's not realistic to be a super mom. So, no. and how, how do you do that sorry, no, That's I was just going to deal with that flirting like that. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, what was I going to say? Like no. the super mom, the super mom syndrome. Like we yeah. think we need to be all the things. It's kind of bad for the kids because then if they think, oh my God, I have to be perfect all the time. Right. If we're trying to show them that that's the way to be, then that can almost be detrimental to them because you want them to see that you make mistakes and you're not perfect. And that's good. That's okay. That's what makes us human. Yeah. So how do you, this is something that we've touched on a lot in this chat because over the last four or five months, I've talked to so many moms with so many different backgrounds and voices. And one of the things we all kind of have in common is trying to maintain that sense of self yeah. and not lose the people we are in this crazy game of momming. Yeah. So any tips for how you handle that? Um, at first it was like almost like an awakening to realize like, oh my gosh, like I don't do anything for myself. And I think Izzy was like probably a little over a year. And then I was like, I need to take up hobbies. And I tried almost like diving into old hobbies. Like I used to love to paint and uh, it just, it didn't work because I would sit for hours and paint and that's not going to work as a mom. So I needed to think of and, and like explore and try new things. So I think it's cool to even like, if you can Google like, uh, like fun hobbies or hobbies at home or outside hobbies and look on Pinterest and you might find something that kind of you're like oh that sounds fun and then just try stuff out and find like what you enjoy and something that's flexible like that you could start and then like step away from for a minute as a mom drinking wine that's a that hot qualify? okay yeah asking for a friend <laughs> <laughs> well i know one thing that you've been doing hobby wise that we have in common is gardening and that has been super Yes. Fun for the whole family, fulfilling, and now we're actually eating what we grew. So tell me about your garden. How's it going? 
It is going really well. It's been so fun to create. Uh, Izzy is my big helper. She helps me with weeding. She's helped me with planting. She helps me with watering. Um, she helps me. Um, I teach her how to actually like remove like basil and things like that. She knows all the right way. She knows how to deadhead flowers now. Um, yeah, she knows all about everything. So it's really fun because it's like science and math and all these things all in one. Um, she helped me build like kind of the rocks you saw in that picture. Um, we've built like all these little kind of rock beds around the outside and she helped me with that. So that's like, you know, engineering and it's, it's been, it's been really fun and it keeps us, we're so physical. It's good for our bodies. It helps us sleep better at night. Absolutely. Manual labor is like a lost art. Yeah. And it's so important, especially for kids, not only household chores, but actually, I mean, I believe it's been proven that physically doing some work outside and lifting and moving yeah. is so stimulating for the kids and so good for their bodies. Um, and yeah, we'll absolutely help you sleep at night. Yeah. Izzy can come deadhead in her flowers. Yes, Charlene, <laughs> yes. Can, you, can Izzy come deadhead my flowers? I did not, I didn't do, do so great with the flowers this year, but the garden is blowing up. So that's good. Larissa said we started a garden too. I think a lot of people, I got to say, one silver lining with all this craziness that's going on with this pandemic is getting back to the basics. I was just going to say, yeah, totally. And it's so funny. We wanted to do a garden last year, but we moved in the spring and I was just like, mm -mm. it was like a long move big. And I was just mentally needed time. And this year I was like, everyone wants to do a garden so like all the things i'm like trying to find all the things before they're all like bought and gone right and disappear yeah. before my eyes and i'm like but i wanted to do one this year i always did not just because of this now, now's the time we made it work we made it work all right we're gonna segue into back to school and you have your back to school essentials and i've learned uh in the last few months that the people here on mom to mom in the chat we like to shop so if you've got things for us to buy, we were happy. But I'd want to say one more thing that I think is so important. And it's something that you've talked about. And I just want to make it be known that moms out there, even if you are not working a traditional job, you are entitled to a break. Let me repeat that for the people in the back. <laughs> you are entitled to a break. And it is so important, right? Yeah, you have to. You have to take a break everything you're doing during the day i mean just being a mom in general it like you get to this level of anxiety that like you'll never you'll never leave it so like you're just going to be anxious about things at all times like in the shower right you just don't ever really have full peace of mind so you have to do little things and to like semi escape and help your brain wind down like it's so important so important. So if you can get someone to help you out even if it's for an hour or two to go get an iced coffee you got to get your mind right. Phones on, sound. I have like the sound, whatever reducing one. So Izzy can't really, and she's in the car, like watching a show and then I can listen to music. And okay. It's, it's all good for our mental health. Okay. So I have the perfect segue into, I don't even want to call it back to school because I don't know if school yeah. as we know it is going to be the same. It most likely won't be. Um, found this floating around the internet and I believe that this mom is every mom right now. Take a look at this. What are you guys doing about school? Have you guys made a decision yet? Hey you, air hug. What are you guys doing about school? This is just so hard, right? It's like, ah, am I right? We're definitely sending them. We're definitely doing virtual. We may do the hybrid option. You know, Frank, we're still weighing the options. I know everyone's going through the same thing, but it's like, we're trying to solve a puzzle blindfolded. <laughs> yeah am i right yeah and i this was my like this was my big year i've had i've worked from home built a company all that with izzy her entire life this year this past year was her first year in part-time pre-k so three days a week she went for three hours each day and kindergarten was my year <laughs> like I cried when she went to pre-K, okay? but And I would have cried when she went to kindergarten, but I'm like, I've been robbed of my time. So this was a tough pill for me to swallow. It's a tough pill. It's a tough pill for all of us. I've been just taking it day by day, Yeah. but things are getting very real and the emails are coming from the superintendents and the principals about what it may look like. And I'm 
not sure I'm fully ready to accept yeah. what we're dealing with here. But you've come up with some essentials that are perfect for sort of this hybrid style that we may be facing or the remote learning that we may be facing. So I want to go through this. As I said, we love to shop here. <laughs> a lot of this stuff is available on Amazon. And also, even if you don't want to buy it, it just kind of gives you ideas because it's kind of time to start laying the groundwork for fall. So we're prepared. Yep. Um, so let's start with some of the more like educational things that kids can be thinking about. So starting with handwriting, is that a good place to start? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. The Stay Sharp pencils are great. So whether your kids are going to be at home or um, at a school, um, they don't have to get up and sharpen their pencils. You don't have to deal with that. It's always kind of a tricky thing. And then it's sharp, you know. And I like these. Izzy has used them. And because they're so thick, the lead is so thick on them, um, they don't, like, break when you're writing. So That's nice because my daughter is going to be going into first grade. And her kindergarten teacher suggested that she write every night. She said, I don't care if it's a sentence or two sentences have her write in a diary, get her a fun notebook. So fun pens and pencils do yeah. encourage you to write, even as a grown up. I'm yeah, like, it's true. I like stationery. Oh, I hear little feet. Someone's coming to see if they approve. Um, we're just talking about writing. What about scented pens? That was on your list too. Yes. What do you think because about that? that? Really was encouraging. Yeah, these Ooh, pens great. smell good that you can buy. Isn't that fun? Okay, talk to me about some of the manipulatives. Stand back here. She's going to show us some of the things. Um, yeah, with. so you can have so many things as mani manipulatives. Um, you can have like, those are like little counting penguins. You can do like the counting pairs. There's tangrams. Um, yep, yeah, those are the kind of unifix cubes. Um, and you can count with those. You can work on measurement with those. Um, oh, yeah. Same with, yes, popsicle sticks. You can use them for math. Um, for visuals for kids, like if you have five and you take two away, how many are left? Um, plus, you can build with them and do, you know, STEM engineering stuff. The popsicle sticks got a big ooh from Grace, so probably, probably because they're rainbow. Yes, I like that. Oh, and even her, good. even her little brother, I think, could get down with that. He's yeah, and you can make it even more fun. Like you could take play doh and stick it, and then stick to be like, all right, we're gonna stick ten in and count to ten, and stick them in and make it real physical and fun. Now we're gonna take five away. Let's count, pull the five out, and then how many do we have left? So you can make it super fun and engaging and physical. It doesn't have to be like sit there and throwing times tables and math. Like even for all the way up, all the ages, you can do multiplication with that too. Because you just make groups and you put them in the groups and then you add them up. I like that. Um, all right. So another um, option you have for us is outdoor gear because the likelihood is that kids may be actually studying outside or, you know, being intense while they go back to school. So you have some rain gear picks for us. Yes. Um, we have been wanting like all, all the outdoor kind of goods. And um, we have been using a lot lately the uh, Rima, Rima North America stuff. Um, they have like amazing stuff for even like mid year and mid seasons or like if it's rainy, that doesn't mean you can't still go outside. They have mittens that aren't lined so your the hands don't get hot, but they're made for like touching and playing with water so your hands don't get like freezing either. They have rain pants that like kids can wear and like stay dry and play outside for a while. Not like, okay, now you're soaked. Everybody come back in. You can stay out and play. Izzy and I, water was running down the side of our house and we put little boats and then we would um, do different types of boats and put things in them and then see which ones went fastest. And so there's so many things you can do. And just because it's cold or whatever, just dress appropriately. And that's why I've mm -hmm. liked this stuff because they have so many different outfits um and like it makes it fun everyone likes a good outfit and i'm learning yeah. that right here being back on the east coast that just because it rains doesn't mean you're you have to stay inside all day right, right. Like, ah, raindrop um lunch you have some fun lunch ideas even though we'll probably be lunching at home. Yes. So lunch there at home or not, um, it's always fun to get like a bento box and you can kind of make meals more fun. And if your kids are old enough uh, and you are working, they can just go grab it right out of the fridge when they're ready for lunch and you don't have to stop in the middle of the day. So kind of creating independence. And, um, you know, you can set up little like bins or like two tier baskets and put different fun snacks and things like that. Um, even like you can do like baggies of grapes and things in the cabinet um, and then they can grab it. If you have younger children, um, you could even do like a, a lunchbox or like a
like a cooler that you have with certain things in it that they can get out like grapes and stuff like that. And it makes it fun for us too, because let's be real, doing the lunches every day can get <laughs> yeah. monotonous for mom too. Yeah. So having a fun that, accessory. I have to speak to that munchie mug. That is like the best invention ever. It's like the only snack container ever worth buying ever again. I um, mean, even comes with like, you can screw that cover off and it comes with a cover that will like keep everything from spoiling. But like that, they, not, they can't drop snacks out of it. It's like the best ever. And there's a couple sizes. I love it. I, those are amazing. Okay. We only have like one more minute. Okay. So, but I want to get in your last tip, which is the kids homework and the homeschool spaces. What? Uh, my tip is create a cool, fun space that's a designated space. That doesn't mean they can't still craft there, or hang out there, do other things there, but make a fun designated space for them to do their work. Um, find little cool, fun ways to kind of decorate it with them, have them help you decorate it, makes it more feel like they were a part of it. And I will actually be sharing a reveal and ideas on my blog soon. I'm pulling so many things together. And you know what? We're going to put your tips up on our website as well. So we will put this all together and have a place so that you guys can all link to it in case you do want to buy any of those products some fun stuff. Um, you can find Erica at busy little Izzy on Instagram. She's on YouTube and full of great tips and you can follow her adorable family. Um, this was so much fun. It went way too fast as always. It was really fast and I tried talking fast, but yeah, you guys can find us. We're on Facebook, Pinterest, YouTube, Instagram, you can find us anywhere, basically. You're the best. <laughs> and you're local. So maybe we'll actually meet in person one day and do this. Wouldn't that be fun? That would be really fun. When everything's safe and sound. All right, Erica, thank you so much. Yes. Take care. Bye. Bye, guys. Oh, my gosh. We covered a lot of territory, and we went a little long. I'm so sorry. Um, okay. So you know where to find Erica. We'll be back next week, same time, same channel, 4 p.m. Wednesday. Who do we have next week, Hannah? Will you tell me in the chat or pop in and tell me who do we have next week? Is it a surprise? Um, in the meantime, you can always check out the Chef's Pantry. That's another one of our digital shows on our sister channel on the Hubs Facebook page with my colleague and fellow mom, Anna Rossi. They're always up cooking, they're always like cooking fun stuff up. Hannah says surprise. <laughs> our guest next week is a surprise, even to me. Um, but I know that we've got some great people on the roster, so I'm excited. Also, in the meantime, you can catch me on The Hub Today weekdays on NBC10 Boston, also on The Hub Today Weekend, which is on NECN, and you can catch Mom to Mom there as well. So thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you again next week. Bye, everyone.